All right, y'all. So what we're going to cover today is we're going to be talking about restriction of domain of the quadratic function and the square root function. Real catchy title. Basically, what we're going to cover today is a little detail of what happens when you inverse a quadratic. Now, just to clarify, quadratics, all they are are things with it, excuse me, something with x squared in it. So let's do something super basic. Let's do f of x. Let's write something slightly bolder. Here we go. Let's do f of x equals x squared. Super duper simple parent function. Okay, now if we wanted to inverse that, the very first thing that we would do is rewrite this thing. We'd rewrite it as y equals x squared. And then we'd switch the x and the y. So now we have x equals y squared. And so to get the y by itself now, we would take a square root of both sides. And we would be left with square root of x equals y. So the f of x or y equals x squared is our original. And we'll say that this square root of x is our inverse. Now one of the other properties that we covered whenever we inverse a function or inverse a data set or a point um, is that it's reflected over a particular axis, reflected over y equals x. So if I have a function and it's reflected, I should see basically the same shape just reflected over that particular line. Um, so let's, let's check this. And I have those. Let me go ahead and switch to my desktop. All right, I have those here and they're not reflected. They're not the same shape. So what's going on? Well, switching back to what we had, there is a step that we may have missed here. Wherever we take a square root, really what we should have is both a positive and negative side of it. So let's, let's go back to the desktop here. And what we should have is a positive answer, but also a negative one. And you can see clearly now we have the same shape on both of those. Okay, well that's, that's pretty good. But there's, there's a problem with this. Let me clear out some of this stuff. If I looked at this as, let's say it was one equation rather than two. I know it's two right now. Let's say it was one equation. This is not a function. It fails our test of what a function is. Um, a function can't have the same x give two different y's. So like if I plug in x is four, I shouldn't be able to get positive two and negative two. That's kind of a problem. Um, we also call this test a vertical line test, where if I can draw a vertical line through something and it crosses twice or more, then it's not a function. So this doesn't work. So instead of doing that, we're going to have to leave this as our inverse. And what we'll have to do is do another kind of little check on this. So what we can do is we can go, all right, well, instead of duplicating our inverse, having a positive and negative answer, let's just limit our original function. Because this inverse, what we have, the square root here, it's all positive numbers anyway. So why don't we just take our original function, put a limit on it. You know, something where like, maybe only the positive side. So if we do x is greater than zero, sorry, greater than or equal to zero, would be a better way of saying it. Do you see how now these lines match? And if I put my dashed line back, everything is symmetrical now along this line, which is what we want. So really what we're doing here is we're just going to take whatever our quadratic is and just split it at the vertex and split it to the positive side. So limit it to the positive side. So here my limit was x is greater than or equal to zero. Um, but I could also write that in kind of the way that we're used to writing it. So let me switch back to our options here. Let me switch back to here. So what we could do is we could say that our limit on the domain is from zero to infinity because our vertex is at zero, zero. And what we're really doing is we're taking the graph, 
So let me draw a graph over here. Yep. So the original graph is like this. And what we're saying is because the vertex is at zero, zero, and what we're interested in is on the right side, the positive side, then we can place that limit and everything will work out. So we're taking wherever the x is and plug it in here. And as far as our range, our range is also going from this original point and going up. So we're going from the y value, which is zero, up to infinity. So wherever number is here is going here. Now for the inverse, the domain range should be the originals, but flipped. And that's what we see. If we switch back to our desktop, the inverses, let me clear this out, the inverses starts at zero, zero, and goes up and to the right. So our domain is from zero to infinity, our range is from zero to infinity. So, yeah, there we go. So, let me put those here. We said domain is from zero to infinity and range is from zero to infinity. Because what should be happening is our domain and range should switch. Problem is this is kind of a boring graph because it's at zero, zero. So let's take something a little more interesting. Let's try same general idea but let's say that the vertex is now of the original is five comma two, okay? So we now have y equals x minus five squared plus two, okay? So let's inverse this. Let's find an inverse for this. If we did that, we'd start by switching x and y. We would subtract two on both sides. So we'd have x minus 2 equals y minus 5 squared. We would take a square root of both sides. So we'd have square root, square root of x minus 2 equals y minus 5. And then we would add 5 to both sides. Now to be clear, we're not going to combine that 2 and that 5. That 2 is under a square root. So we can't combine those. So we'll Keep this as square root, x minus 2, plus 5, equals y, with the 5 not being under the square root, okay? So, we now have an original and an inverse. So, let's graph this thing. Uh, instead of graphing it there, let's let's switch this thing back to our. Mm -hmm. Now we can go ahead and pull up Desmos. Let's see. It's under here. Okay, so let's pull up Desmos. Let's say split view with this. Okay. So what we'll do, oh no, it's all rotating. Okay, what we'll do is we'll do y equals x minus five squared plus two. So that's our original. And our inverse is y equals square root of x minus two plus five. And we want it switched on this line dashed black. Cool. All right. So let's take a look at this thing. Well, that doesn't quite match up right now. So we need to put some sort of limit on it. And what we're interested in is we're interested in the right portion of this graph, the positive portion, because our vertex is at 5, 2. So we're going to put a limit on the domain here. See if I can zoom that in a little bit more. There we go. So we're going to put a limit on the domain from 5 to positive infinity because our vertex is at 5. We, we essentially want this number here 
the x value of our vertex to go in there. So let's let's do that. Let's say that we want a limit of 5 is less than or equal to x, less than or equal to infinity. That's how you have to type it into Desmos, at the very least. And now you can see, hey, everything matches. It works. It's great. Um, but let's also talk range. Um, we're talking the original function. And so the original function is this red function. For whatever reason, it doesn't like me and won't allow me to click on it. But you can see that it starts at 5, 2. So we're going up from 2 for our y values. So the original's range, pardon me, starts at 2 on the y value and goes up. So 2 to infinity. And it kind of makes sense. This 2 should match this 2. And now our inverse here starts at 2, 5, which, again, makes sense, inverse points. So our domain starts at an x value 2 and goes up. Our range starts at a y value of 5 and goes up. So again, these numbers kind of do what you expect them to do. Your domain range switch. That's part of, again, why we have to put this limit is the domain of our original function should match the range of our inverse. Basically, this stuff has to equal this stuff. And this stuff has to equal this stuff. So because of that, everything matches up. It's all kind of based on the vertex. So hopefully that makes some sense. Um, if you have questions, feel free to ask. There's not really a whole bunch more than this. They have, we have a whole bunch of slides. I use none of them. Um, so yeah, hopefully this makes some sense and helps out if you're struggling on this. Have a good one, y'all.